What's so great about friendship and intelligence? We'll find out in a conversation with Mark Potts, Head of Insights for Mindshare North America, as we're changing it up this week to deep dive into our new research, Badge Brands and the New Millennial Identity. Hi, Kat Suited here, and we're talking to Mark Potts about the changing ways millennials are building their identities and what the implications are for brands. Hi, Mark. Hi, Kat. Great to be here. Uh, millennials account for about 30% of the U.S. population, about $200 billion in mm -hmm. purchasing power. It's an incredibly important generation, and the work that we've done that we'll talk about is key for any brand that wants to understand how to best navigate uh, this generation. It's incredibly important to understand the changing face of millennials in order to stay relevant to them. Let's talk a little bit about the research that you've done. Yeah, so we uh, did a large study amongst millennials, both qualitative and quantitative, uh, very specifically about their identities and how those identities affect how badge brands operate mm -hmm. in the world. Um, we also worked with the author, David Burstein, mm -hmm. uh, in order to get you know, his take as well in, in terms of who millennials are and how they're changing. You hear a lot about badge brands. It's become almost mythological in a way. For the record today, what is a badge brand and how do you define it? It's a great question. People buy products for lots of reasons. Uh, people mm -hmm. buy products for functional reasons, to do things they need them to do. But also people buy products in order to express to the world who they are, uh, what they believe in, which mm -hmm. social groups they belong to, why they're better than other people. Mm -hmm. And that's really the role of badge brands, is to help consumers uh, communicate their identities to the world uh, and, uh, and, and communicate who they are. So I remember the iconic rise of Apple and Nike. And you know, I personally remember wearing Abercrombie and Fitch almost religiously during school. When you think about it, how have badge brands changed and what's really driving that change? So, so in the 90s and the 2000s, it was very mm -hmm. easy to point to which, what a brand, badge brand was, Abercrombie and Fitch, Tommy mm -hmm. Hilfiger, et cetera. I think right now there's a big question mark over badge brands because of this shift in millennials. Mm -hmm. And that question mark is happening for three reasons. One, millennials clearly uh, seem to prefer experiences over things. Mm -hmm. um, and so when we ask millennials, what would you like to have in your life? Uh, the number one answer is a house. But the number two answer mm -hmm. is good experiences, uh, good stories to tell my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. That's really indicative of this idea that millennials really want experiences in their lives. And number two, millennials are a generation that lives on social media. And so it's very easy to communicate your, your identity on social media with content by linking to a piece of BuzzFeed content mm -hmm. or linking to an article that says that you are funny or that you're smart mm -hmm. or that you belong to a particular social group. I think the third issue that badge brands have is that there's been a shift in values amongst millennials, and that's a lot of the work that we did really mm -hmm. focused on that. And there's a shift uh, uh, towards uh, friendship values. Mm -hmm. And so when you ask millennials uh, what things best represent who they are, number one is, is the things I do for other people, mm -hmm. number two are the friends I have, and then right down the bottom of the list are the brands that I buy. And I think that, that's created a real issue for badge brands uh, for this generation. You know, what I find most fascinating about what you said is there's a big difference with millennials versus earlier generations. It's less about the product and it's more about the experience economy that they're living in. Would you say that that expands the definition of the categories that fall into badge brands? I think that definitely expands the, the definition of how millennials express their identities. Uh, products still have a role to play there, so look at Tom's Shoes, uh, look at Chipotle. Um, those products are, are still you know, in part offering experiences, but they are still products that you buy. What's different about them is the values that they're helping millennials communicate. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and those are really around two areas, around helping millennials communicate that they have friendship values mm -hmm. and helping millennials communicate that they have intelligence values. Mm -hmm. So if you think about millennials, you know, that growing up in, the, um, in their 20s, um, it's the first time that that, that generation of 20-somethings aren't settling down and having families mm -hmm. and aren't having family values be the, be the core part of, of, of their lives at that point. Instead, they are retaining their friendships, building new friendships throughout their 20s mm -hmm. and to some degree their early 30s. And so that's why you see friendship values and, and communicating that you're a good friend, that you have good intentions, etc., as, as something that's really important for millennials. Uh, secondly, they're a generation uh, that are the most educated in history and have also grown up in a, in a service economy uh, where having uh, a smart brain is more important than, than your brawn. Mm -hmm. And so communicating that you're smart, that you're intelligent, that you're pragmatic is, is incredibly important. And so experiences, yes, are important, mm -hmm. but also buying products that enable you to show that you have friendship and, and, and intelligent values mm -hmm. are, is also incredibly important. 
When you think about the work that we've done on badge brands in the last five to 10 years, I would imagine that the rules of advertising would need to change. What would you say are the key rules of marketing a badge brand today? So there, there are three rules. One, uh, help millennials communicate their mm -hmm. friendship values. So as a brand, have good intentions. Uh, show that you're empathetic. Show mm -hmm. that you know how to have fun. Show that you are able to help millennials build friendships and that you are, you know, help, help them operate within social groups. The second rule is to show that you're smart mm -hmm. uh, as a brand. Uh, Apple does this very well. Every time somebody uh, pulls out an iPhone from their pocket, they're mm -hmm. basically saying, I'm creative or I'm pragmatic. Mm -hmm. um, so show that you're smart is the second, is the second rule. And the third rule is to, is to set up those two value areas as KPIs for brand success. So friendship values and everything that goes with that, but also intelligent values. And measure your sex, success against that uh, and, and, and ensure that you are hitting those values uh, in your brand tracking, but as a, as a brand. What happens if brands don't pay attention to these new rules? So not only is it critical right now uh, with this generation, they're a huge generation with spending mm -hmm. power it, to be able to connect to them if you're a brand that markets to millennials. Uh, it's also important for the future for every brand to work this generation out. Mm -hmm. uh, this, the, the spending power of this generation is going to increase as their incomes increase. Uh, and so not, not hitting on those values, not hitting on the learnings about uh, millennials is going to create issues for any brand in the future that wants to communicate with the broad general mm -hmm. target audience. Wise words. Thanks, Mark.